Good day. Well, after weeks of discussions and rumours and negotiations, and following Taliban claims that they control the Panjshir Valley, claims which, by the way, are still contested, the Taliban have finally announced the makeup of their government. And it is absolutely and categorically not the inclusive government that the Russians and the Chinese and other partners or potential partners of Afghanistan were looking and hoping for. It is now increasingly looking as if the negotiations that the Taliban was engaged in over these last few weeks were basically a stringing out exercise to allow the Taliban time to gain control of every part of Afghanistan so that they could then create a government which is entirely built around their core leadership. Most of the figures that make up this government are veterans of the, of the previous period of time when the Taliban was in control of most of Afghanistan in the 1990s. And the Prime Minister, Hassan, uh, Mullah Hassan Akhund, Akhund, is somebody that is regarded as a terrorist in several countries and who is, of course, on various wanted lists and US, UN and US sanctions lists. Well, the fact that he's on sanctions lists would not probably be a great issue for some of the neighbouring states, but it would certainly be an issue for some of the uh, regional powers, the big regional powers, Russia, China and Iran, that this government is not inclusive. Not inclusive in the sense that it doesn't contain or bring within it any of the communities that make up Afghanistan and which the Russians and the Chinese in particular see as essential for a stable government to be organised in Afghanistan, which would be in control, uh, stably in control, of the entire country. Well, the Taliban have tried to, uh, um, to moderate the impact of their announcement by claiming that the government that they have just announced is only an interim government, but I doubt that anyone in uh, anywhere around the world or any of their major interlocutors takes that terribly seriously. In particular, I suspect that the Russians and the Chinese will be annoyed that Abdul Ghani Barada, the uh, deputy leader of the Taliban, somebody who they had worked with closely and who they uh, had come to see as a relative moderate, has only been given a post as Deputy Prime Minister, subordinating him to the much harder line figure of Hassan Akhund. Well, maybe it was unrealistic to expect that the Taliban, having won a, a decisive victory against the United States and the previous Afghan government, would moderate itself and would try to create a, a, a inclusive government reaching out to the various communities that make up Afghanistan. It looks as if, instead, the hardliners within the Taliban, fired up by their victory, um, uh, uh, have insisted that they be given important positions within the government on the basis that, after all, they were the ones who fought and won the war, and it would make no sense for them to be excluded. Well, it might make sense to them that they are the leading figures in this government, but it makes no sense to the Chinese or the Russians. And we've already had commentaries from the Chinese media and from the Russian media, which makes clear the disappointment of the Chinese and Russian governments in the makeup of this government. And the uh, commentary, in the case of China, has appeared in China's major English language overseas voice, Global Times, and it reads as follows. China to hold Taliban to honour pledge to cut ties with terrorism 
after interim government announcement. That was the headline. And then it goes on to say, the article goes on to say, the Afghan Taliban on Tuesday announced key members of its new interim government, whose structure shows the Taliban want to ensure its political dominance and absolute control in the country, and means the Taliban at this stage will still prioritise solving internal problems rather than responding to expectations from the international community. Although the key positions of the interim government are dominated by Taliban members, the Taliban might share some grassroots positions with non-Taliban forces in the country. However, some of these Taliban senior members are on UN sanctions lists, which remains a major concern for the international community and also increases difficulty for this interim government to be recognised widely and restore normal international exchanges, said Chinese analysts, adding that China will keep paying attention to the situation and will not change its position of urging the Taliban to keep what was promised. In other words, what the, Tal- what the Chinese are saying is that this is a government made up of hardliners, some of them on a uh, on UN sanctions lists, UN sanctions lists, which by definition, by the way, China has also voted for. As such, it is deeply disappointing to Beijing, and though the Chinese will not seek to overthrow this government, they will be watching the situation in Afghanistan closely, And they will be seeing how this government acts if it tries to uh, um, re-integrate Afghanistan into the regional uh, um, structures, the Eurasian community and the rest. And if it does behave in a more moderate way towards other Afghan communities. And of course, if it acts also to resist Uh, uh, the importation into Afghanistan of foreign terrorist groups like ISK and others, well, then the Chinese might put aside their uh, feelings about its makeup and might decide to still work with it. But their disappointment about its makeup is nonetheless still obvious. Well, what the Chinese have said is mirrored exactly by what the Russians have said. And the Russian comments come in an article which has appeared in the Russian daily newspaper Izvestia. Now, Izvestia in the Soviet era was one of the most important newspapers in the Soviet Union. It was the official newspaper of the Soviet Parliament and therefore was secondary only to Pravda, the Communist Party's newspaper, as a newspaper of record. It no longer has that position anymore. It is, in theory, a uh, independent newspaper, but it is widely known to reflect government thinking and has recently, by the way, been uh, restructured as a full-scale newspaper instead of a tabloid, a broadsheet newspaper instead of a tabloid. So this is what Izvestia has to say. The Taliban have formed Afghanistan's interim government. Most of its members led the country in the first Taliban rule in 1996 to 2001 and are on the United Nations blacklist. The new cabinet is not inclusive as it does not involve other political forces. Experts interviewed by Izvestia believe that the international community will be in no rush to recognise the new government. Director of the Centre of Eurasian Studies at Moscow State Institute of International Relations, Ivan Safranchuk, explained that most countries would prefer to cooperate with the new Afghan government selectively, refraining from fully recognising it. I think that most members of the international community will adopt a wait-and-see attitude. They will be willing to discuss humanitarian and and security issues with the Taliban, but there will be no political recognition. However, some countries certainly will maintain 
full-fledged relations with them. Russia is inclined to join the second group of countries. Many countries won't bring their embassies back to Afghanistan anytime soon, but Russia's embassy continues to operate. So that is essentially the identical position to the one that the Chinese are expressing. China and Russia will maintain their embassies in Kabul. They will continue to interact with this new government, but they will stop short of full-scale recognition. As to what happens next, they will wait and see what this new government does. If it reverts to the policies of the 1990s, then the Chinese and the Russians may decide that this is a hopeless exercise and might pull back and uh, uh, will not go ahead and cooperate with it on any major scale, like trying to reintegrate it in the Eurasian institutions or bring it into the Belt and Road Initiative, but they might still work with it on selective issues. However, if, on the contrary, despite its hardline makeup, it behaves in a pragmatic way, then possibly, just possibly, more extensive cooperation might take place. It might be recognised as the legitimate government of Afghanistan by the Chinese and the Russians, and it might indeed be integrated in the Eurasian institutions, which is what the Chinese and the Russians would like to see. But it depends now on what the government does, given how disappointing its makeup is. Well, as I've said many times, Afghanistan is at a turn in the road and much depends on what the Taliban itself does. And perhaps, as I said, it was unrealistic to accept, expect that Taliban veterans who fought long and hard for 20 years to uh, uh, lead Afghanistan would give up that position once the Taliban had achieved a victory. But I would make two observations. Firstly, it's not clear to me that these people who now lead the Taliban government have either the diplomatic skills or the technical skills to govern Afghanistan and to lead it well. Both of them, both in both cases, they seem to be uh, fighters who are no doubt resolute and tough in engaging in an insurgency war, and also, in some cases, religious scholars whose understanding of the needs of modern societies, or indeed even developing societies like uh, Afghanistan's, leave much to be desired. They do not look like the kind of government that a country like Afghanistan needs at this time. Certainly, they do not seem to be the sort of people who would attract the kind of technocratic figures that any government which wants to embark upon a, a sustained development of its country urgently requires. Given that Afghanistan is now looking at a potential hyperinflation situation with the currency collapsing and food prices rising, this government looks spectacularly ill-equipped to handle the situation. One has to wonder whether as problems grow and challenges increase and as the economic and financial situation spirals out of control, whether this government won't do like the Taliban government did back in the 90s, fall back on increasing coercion include, instead of co-optation and, uh, um, and inclusive politics, in which case its days as the leadership of Afghanistan may turn out to be relatively short. Well, I think there is still time for things to turn out otherwise, but nobody who looks at the situation and who wants to see Afghanistan achieve peace can be anything but disappointed by these decisions and by the makeup of this government which has just been formed. I'm going to lastly say one very last thing about Izvestia. As I said, it's no longer perhaps a newspaper of record, 
but it does reflect uh, government thinking, as does Global Times. However, the fact that the Russians and the Chinese have expressed their dismay in polite terms in newspapers rather than in public announcements, say from their foreign ministry spokesman or from their governments, shows that they're still prepared to uh, uh, um, extend a hand to the Taliban if it is prepared to grasp it. But the Taliban are now, in effect, on notice that the Russians and the Chinese are disappointed by the way the, uh, the direction events are taking. And that hand may not be outstretched for very long. Well, thank you for joining me for this brief programme about this latest announcement from Afghanistan. Um, no doubt much more to say about it soon. Uh, we will obviously keep an eye on what is going on in Afghanistan and we will see how things turn out. Uh, in the meantime, please uh, remember to check us out on our other platforms, uh, BitChute, Library, Odyssey, SuperU, but above all, Locals, and where we have a thriving community and we are, where we are now increasingly publicising exclusive content, content exclusive to Locals, and including, including before long content which will be exclusive to our members, our active members on Locals. And also please check out SuperU, the new free speech platform where we are uh, also heavily engaged and where we are uh, working hard. Last but not least, if you want to support this channel, you can do so via Patreon and Subscribestar and by going to our shop and buying the amazing things you will find there, our magic mugs, our hats, our hoodies, our sweatshirts, our t-shirts and all the rest. And please press the like button if you like this video and please remember to check your subscription to this channel. Thank you for joining me again today. I look forward to you joining me again soon and have a wonderful day until then.